Daphna Michelson Janae is a state representative for the Colorado House of Representatives, and she's here to share a little motivation to inspire you to find and use your voice to make an impact. So Daphna, you have definitely been an inspiration for me personally to continue to use my voice. And I want to make sure that, you know, we really get an understanding of what you really mean by that and, you know, how you've been empowering other people to do so. Well, certainly, I, first of all, I'm totally touched that, that you feel that I'm an inspiration for you because you totally are an inspiration for so many people. Um, in the past, when you and I have spoken, we've spoken about my journey uh, to all 50 states to find and share the stories of ordinary people yeah. solving problems in the community. And the book that I wrote about that, which really focused on what does it take to be a community problem solver. And in my role now as a state representative, just having completed my first legislative session, I found a whole new way that women in particular have an opportunity to use their voice in a way that they might not think about. So um, I'd love to give you a couple of examples of things that have happened this past legislative session. Yeah. So one is um, we often, as women, we don't talk about loss. Um, for example, we don't talk about pregnancy loss, we don't talk about postpartum depression, we don't talk about depression at all. And one woman in, in my community, in the community that I represent, had suffered with very serious postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And she really felt like she wanted to be able to do something, but she didn't know what that was. And while we just learned from Leslie how she created this wonderful thing to grow from her cancer experience to help others not to have cancer in a simply beautiful way, mm -hmm. in the same way, this constituent wasn't going to start a program. She's a librarian. She's an introvert. She's a brand new mom. Um, and so she reached out to her representatives. She reached out to me and she reached out to her state senator and she said, look, you know, as a, as a new mom who went through very serious postpartum depression, there were no resources for me. Yeah. What can you do? Simply by picking up that phone and making that call, by sending an email, we were able to go back and the senator in our area was able to go back and we found some money that we could put towards maternal mental health screenings. Okay. We created a, um, a resolution. We talked about maternal mental health from the well of the House floor and yeah. from the well of the Senate floor. And we made maternal mental health an issue in Colorado that women and their, their partners were talking about because one woman decided, hey, I'm She's going through an experience. Yeah. I've got to use my voice to do something about it. So that's, that's one example. There's yeah. another example. Um, we hear in the news often that um, women who file for sexual assault and go to court often are treated very poorly in the process of that trial. Mm -hmm. um, they're accused, they're given a bad name, and as women who, you know, I myself experienced state rape when I was 14 years old, wow. um, so many of us have have been victims of sexual violence in some way, shape, or form, we're pretty sure that you don't put yourself in that scenario unless you've experienced something yeah. from the aggressor. Um, so she reached out after a recent uh, lawsuit that was you know, watched nationally and probably internationally, came back and once again, the abuser is not going to be charged. And, wow. and she reached out and she said, you know, we've got to do something, we've got to do something. And so we started exploring, what are the laws in Colorado if a woman was going to file for sexual assault? What are the protections we might be able to put in place for yeah. her for her dignity, even for the um, accused dignity? You know, what are the things that we can be doing to make sure that a woman has an opportunity to truly address her aggressor, um, to truly use her voice, and to be treated with the dignity and respect that we would all hope that we would receive from the court? So. Yeah. This woman also was a victim um, and was not about to create a new program or do something like that, but she knew that she could use, raise up her voice yes. and lift up other women with her just by reaching out to her representatives. So wow. I want to encourage, and I, I, I'm grateful to you for this opportunity, but I really want to encourage women who are experiencing some sort of loss, who are experiencing some sort of trauma, who have an idea of how things might be better, who are having concerns within their community, to absolutely lift up your voice, reach out mm -hmm. to your representative, and if they don't respond well to you, find another representative to reach out to. Call yeah. me. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's funny, that's not ever something I would have thought of as a step of what to do. I mean, if anything, the biggest step I might take if I felt something is maybe start a petition online and share it on social sure. media, but I wouldn't have thought to go to a state representative and ask someone to speak up for me or do something about it. And it's not even only speaking up. We're going to create a law yeah. that can be put into place that can protect you in the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I think those online petitions are wonderful. It's a way to recognize and understand that you're not alone. Yes. Right? So that's step one. Step two is, okay, now I've got all these signatures. Now I know that this is an issue that not only I'm experiencing or not even only that I have recognized. Mm -hmm. So now take it to that next level and let us help you by, by looking at what we might be able to do to make the community a better, stronger place for you to live. Yeah, that's so powerful. Thank you. So is there anything else that we can do to lift up our voices even stronger and be more powerful and um, really speaking up for what is meaningful and important to us? Yes, you can run for office. <laughs> and yes. um, you, Crystal <laughs> Covington, and you, beautiful audience, can absolutely run for office. Yes. And guess what? There are all sorts of offices to run for. Yes. And right now, women are entirely underrepresented in elected bodies. Mm -hmm. We have more women in Colorado in the State House than many. We used to have the most, but we don't any longer. We are starting to lose ground. Uh -huh. So I don't care what party you are. I don't care who you affiliate with. You should step up and consider, is there an office that I can run yeah. for? So think about school board. Think about auditor. Think about county commissioner. Think about state house. Think about mm -hmm. state senate. Think about governor. I mean, everybody else is running for governor right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, so there are, there are all sorts of positions that you might consider running yeah. for. And depending on where you live, it could be a really simple task to say, hey, I'm going to throw my name on a ballot. My yeah. dad actually um, went and voted, and he's in Pennsylvania, and there's a particular elected position that he wrote his name in on because there was no name there. Well, he won because nobody else had written their oh, name yeah. on it. So he was, an, a, a, it was, he was an elections judge. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, you know, sometimes it's a little easy to get elected, um, and sometimes it isn't. But you sometimes know what? It's challenging. That's right. Um, yeah. My election was really, really challenging. Yeah. And who came around me? Other women. So build your community. Reach out to those of us who are in elected office. Let us help you sit next to us on the floor because yeah. that's the best and strongest way for you to raise your voice. And I think one of the biggest things that I have learned about running for office is that the, um, the qualifications are not what people think. Mm -hmm. You think that you know you need to have had you know all this experience in politics. You need to have you know been involved here, here, and there. And yes, sometimes those things are helpful, but you do not you know on paper it does not say you have to have done this for a lot of the positions. Yeah, I had zero um, political experience. I had done yeah. some trainings, but I've never held a political office. Yeah. And actually, I think that that endeared me to people because I wasn't looked at as a politician. Yeah. So don't, you know, women are really good about saying, oh, I'm not qualified. Yeah. Let's change that messaging a little bit and, and think a second because you know what? Actually, it's my life experiences that I'm bringing to the table right. and you are qualified. Yes. Well, thanks so much Thank for you. sharing that insightful, uh, those insightful examples and you know, really giving us the inspiration to go after sharing our voice and doing something, taking action. Thank you. Thank you for doing this and giving women an opportunity to have their voices heard. Thanks, Daphna.